So we are talking with uh, Beata Biel, uh, a journalist and a journalist um, professor from Poland. Um, tell me please, Beata, uh, I think every journalist made at least once a mistake that led to uh, disinformation. Did you did it or not? And if you did, how did you repair your mistake? Yeah, I did it for sure at least once. On social media, on Twitter, I actually killed uh, a Prime Minister uh, of the UK, um, uh, and uh, I just heard she. Sorry, I'm so tired, and I just forgot her name. Um, so uh, I wrote that she's dead, although she was absolutely fine. But I just saw some fake news, and I followed it, and uh, that's how I spread misinformation. And I quickly realized that people are sharing this story, so. All I could do is delete the uh, first tweet of mine and then say sorry to everyone. I think like if you make a mistake, saying sorry is super important. Uh, I'm sure like I have worked as a journalist for 16 years. I'm sure I made more mistakes, but there were not like any big mistakes. Uh, uh, if if I was making any big mistakes, I probably would be jailed or <laughs> uh, sued by people. But uh, on social media, I think this killing of the prime minister of the UK was the biggest one. <laughs> the former uh, prime minister of the UK. Is he uh, okay now? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, um, in Moldova, a lot of so-called satirical websites are uh, making uh, pamphlets that uh, seem to be, could be true. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are disseminating, like, panic in, uh, in our society. Uh, is it somehow hard to make people uh, understand that it's a satire or not? And um, my, my question is, what would you recommend to do with the, these websites if uh, nobody fights them back? Um, it depends, because actually I think uh, most of the satirical websites I know, uh, either in Polish or in German or in English, are the funny ones. Uh, and I truly enjoy them uh, because usually they're uh, ironical, they have a very good attitude toward current affairs and they're putting a different perspective on them. If it's satirical but the idea is also to be evil, uh, then it's a different kind of story, uh, you are correct. Uh, most of the websites, if they're satirical, they usually have information about it on the website. So if we're a general user and we're having some doubts, we should always read about us section. So to see uh, what, who's behind and whether they say it's satirical. It's always good to look what other articles the website is writing. If they're all sensational, if they all seem unbelievable and seem like uh, too satirical, then we should not believe that kind of story. But how to fight them? Well, in the times of freedom of the press, it's pretty difficult because on one, on one of the sides you have uh, a pre a freedom of the press and expression. You can express your uh, feelings and attitudes even in a satirical way. Uh, but when it's dangerous and misleading, I think it should be an effort of uh, schools, NGOs and other media outlets to point to this kind of media saying that they're spreading fake or uh, misleading or dangerous information because if it's dangerous for people's security, if it's dangerous for a democracy, if it's dangerous for other people's health, I think we should also other media outlets should be talking loud about it. So if you, you are a journalist for 16 years, yeah. so that's a long uh, term, <laughs> um, how is uh, I'll be the light. I'll be the light. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Enlightenment. Yeah. How is uh, disinformation punished in Poland? Um, there are different tools, uh, but um, the law should be actually changed. I think in Poland, in Poland, what you can do. Uh, if there's misinformation about a private person or a company, you can go to court and you can go either to civil court or you can go to crime court. So you can be punished from uh, and even go to jail for uh, misinformation, which is, I think, terrible uh, because sometimes it can be just a simple mistake and uh, it should be not punished that way. But there are different tools, so you can be punished with money, you can be punished uh, with a saying, uh, even a sentence or uh, some kind of uh, saying sorry. So I, I think the tools are there. 
Uh, the, the thing is sometimes it's pretty difficult to go to, to court with fake news because what if it's 90% of the story is true but one number is not true? Uh, would you go to court with that? Or if it's more expressing of opinions instead of uh, facts, can you go to court with opinions? So it's sometimes difficult. Another thing is that uh, many of the websites that are fake are not actually based in the country where they're publishing. So like with the US during the elections, there were a lot of fake websites that were run from Macedonia. So if it's a website from another country, then it's very difficult to deal with punishment. So the last question, um, is it important that a uh, journalism uh, professor uh, practice journalism? Um, yeah, I think, you know, depending on what you're teaching. Uh, I, sorry, I ask because usually in Moldova, uh, prof journalism prof uh, pr professors don't yeah. practice, they don't, they didn't uh, write a story for, for a whole life. Yeah. yeah, I know that when I was studying journalism, I did study journalism. Uh, uh, I don't remember if I had a single teacher that worked as a journalist or uh, worked as a journalist like for more than a year. So actually, I learned journalism because on my second year of studying, I just went uh, for an uh, internship and I stayed in the media. So I was actually learning from you know from my colleagues. Uh, but now when I'm teaching, I can still, still see that most of the teachers are not journalists. So, you know, recently students came to me and said, like, what can we do? Can, we have to do a revolution at our university. We cannot stand. We are watching Zelik all the time. And uh, the teachers want us to do a movie like Zelik. And how are we supposed to do that? Uh, so they're not teaching them the tools because they don't know the tools. So I don't actually think you need to be a journalist, but maybe you can be a digital person, so that you go to a university and you teach people how to create maps. You go and teach them how to do filming. So that can be people from different areas, but uh, I think it's key that the, some of the teachers at universities are journalists. So recently I started teaching at one of the universities, but previously I was there as a guest. Uh, and some of the students were coming, but it's actually from different universities, I always hear it. Um, I, I came uh, to a university and they said like within the last hour and a half we have learned more than throughout the year. Or I invited one of the universities to a hack hackathon I was organizing and uh, they said like oh but we don't have a developer, we don't have the skills, all the other teams are journalists, we will not handle it. And I said like just come and try. And I came and they tried. Their, maybe their project wasn't awesome like the others were, but it was pretty good. And the intensity of their thinking, that the three students, uh, when they left the hackathon, they said like they, had, they don't think they would ever learn that kind of stuff during their studies, through the whole studies. So now the uni I'm, I'm talking to the university so that they would join more of that kind of events. Because even if the students don't win, even if the projects are way different from the others, they, at least they're trying and they're meeting the real journalists and they're meeting the real challenges. So I think that the university should be more open to this kind of challenges. How many students have you met here at uh, this event? Um, I haven't actually spoken to many, I, I think just two or three. Uh, um, the thing with students is still they don't go to events, that's a huge problem also that I see in Poland. Uh, or other events, I usually see established journalists or many actually NGOs people and marketing communications people. Journalists are also sometimes lazy to go and learn. Uh, but the thing with students is sometimes they don't want to pay if it's paid for, uh, sometimes they're just lazy. So, for example, with my students, I always tell them if you're going to events, you don't have to write a final thesis, for example, because like I think writing thesis is sometimes a waste of time because people are just copying things and searching on the internet. Uh, if they go and if they talk to the experts, if they do stuff and if they hear stuff, like if they go to recently, I had the, um, I'm running also with my colleagues uh, hacks and hackers in Warsaw. And there was a presentation, for example,